Since the pandemic began in March of 2020, universities have remained either entirely online or have offered a substantial amount of courses with online options. This has allowed individuals to attend classes from all around the globe. For example, last year it was announced that many courses at the University of Toronto, Mississauga would remain online. As a result, some students with online-only schedules did not renew their leases, sold their cars, remained in foreign countries, and planned for an online-only school year. However, it was not until the first day of November 2021 that the university finalized its winter timetable. In this finalization, 85% of courses from the second semester beginning in January 2022 were moved to in-person. This short-term notice left many scrambling to find a way to get back to Mississauga in order to work towards getting their degrees. In response, some students created an online petition opposing the university's decision to attend school in person on such short notice. After receiving emails, phone calls, and the petition, which included over 2,000 signatures, University of Toronto decided to move forward with their plan to start classes in person. Other universities have also moved their courses in person, including McMaster University and Waterloo University. Joining me today to discuss this further is my fellow co-host, Simone Vani. Hi, Simone. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Thank you for having me back. Anytime. <laughs> so, Simone, what do you think about the university's decision to hold classes in person next semester? I personally think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. As a student myself, I'm still in school, so as a student myself, I am very excited about the prospect of going back to campus. It's been quite a long time since students have seen the face of any campus for that matter, and I think a lot of us can agree that we're missing the feeling of being in school. Um, being online for over a year now, it just doesn't feel like we're in school, it's just mm -hmm. something we're doing at this point. So, plus, high schools have already started going back to in-person classes starting September. Mm -hmm. So I guess universities taking that step was the but obvious next step, I guess. Yes, I agree with you. It just seems like it's such short notice for international students, people who had already made plans, uh, as I mentioned in the, in the intro, to stay with it online. Do you th I think they should have offered some sort of hybrid. That would be a good idea, I want to say. In order to support them, yeah, and a hybrid would be a good idea. So just dual delivery option. So those who can make it online, great. Those who cannot, they can stream it, I guess. Um, which would be a bit of work for universities to get that set up. Imagine all the hassle they went through to turn everything in person to online, and now we're going to be telling them to maybe do something hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess it would be a good idea for anyone who is out of the country, or maybe not in Toronto or Ontario per se, maybe. Exactly. What are the benefits for going back to in-person classes? Uh, benefits I'm not too sure, to be honest, but as a student, like I said, I'm just excited to go back to campus. Um, I've definitely missed it, but benefits would definitely be something like access to all the amenities, um, facilities, things like libraries and <laughs> gyms or whatever it may be for that matter. As students, we obviously had access to all of that. Thanks to COVID, not much. Yeah, I say not much because yes, it was still open and people were still able to get help, but just not being on campus itself just made it seem very restrictive to at least me personally. So I think it's great and I think the biggest benefit is to be able to see your colleagues, your peers, your teachers in person, to be able to build that student relationship with them, I guess. Yes, which is a large part of why you go to university, exactly. is to form these relationships. Yeah. And it seems like there's a huge, um, it feels like you get more for your, your dollar, more value yeah. for your dollar when you're actually on campus. You understand what you're paying for a little bit more yeah. than just sitting in on a Zoom class. Yeah, it just feels so detached. Yes. Everyone's in their own little squares and yes. in Lord knows which part of the world. Yes. But it's just, it's, it's just not, the best, I guess. It's not the same. No, yeah. it's not the same. I, I agree. I, I learn much better in person. So do I. I. And yeah. I know in um, most of my classes, too, a lot of them are like, it's just not the same feeling to be in person versus online. A lot of people like the atmosphere of being in a classroom. Yes, absolutely. It's a whole different feeling. Yes, and this really showed us truly the impact of it. Yeah. Because you could understand that before, but now we yeah. truly know. Yeah. yeah. Do universities have an obligation to help students who have sold their vehicles, not signed a lease around the campus, or do not have housing? I want to say no. Um, like, there's still, yes, it's short notice, but you still have 
a bit of time to find your footing, get cars, your lease assigned, whatever its situation may be. Yes, it seems a bit harder for international students who will be coming here and starting kind of from the beginning. But you still have time. Um, I'm sure the university are going to do whatever they can to support you in any way possible. But not with things like getting a lease or getting a car or things like that. Maybe like tuition help. I'm not even sure. I actually have to disagree with you on yeah. that. I, I, I disagree with that point. I've, I feel that it is incredibly short notice when we've been when they promised one thing and then reneged on it and left you kind of high and dry in the midst of what is still a global pandemic. Yeah. And we're talking about students here. We're not really um, talking about people with large uh, reserves of income yeah. usually uh, or resources. It's a lot of young people who are trying to make their way in the world. And now instead of focusing on their studies, which there's still many still have ongoing classes mm. and some don't have help from family or parents. They may be international and, and learning in a second language and trying to navigate in a second language, which is incredibly uh, difficult. Yeah. I've navigated, and I'm sure you have, yeah. had to navigate in, in many different countries without help. And it would be incredibly hard um, while you're trying to complete your education. So I think that universities, since they made the decision and now the students have to deal with the consequences, I believe the university should be helping people out or at least providing options, some sort of bursary or Maybe. scholarship. I guess something like something that would like be that. okay, yes. But like, the university has been saying since the beginning of this year that they're gonna go back to in person, back to in person, back to in person. It's just gotten extended. So I feel like, you knew it was going to happen at some point or the other. I agree it is short notice that yes, we're going to go back in the next two months, but you knew somewhere it was going to happen eventually. Fair. Yeah, we know it's going to happen eventually, but yeah. when and where when and, and why, where, yeah. and with such short notice, I think that the universities do have an obligation to do something. No, fair enough. Maybe not fix it completely, but meet the students halfway. Halfway. No, that yeah. I will agree with, but yeah, I yeah. guess depends. <laughs> The University of Toronto Mississauga released an email to students acknowledging that they have received students' feedback, but that they will be going back to in-person classes regardless. What are your thoughts on this? I kind of want to side with universities on this one as well. Um, I don't blame them, to be fair. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone wants to go back to normal, and while everyone's been crying about normal, this is normal. You've been going to school for so long. You wake up every morning and you go to classes. Mm -hmm. This was just an exception because of the pandemic, right? Yes. As a student myself, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love waking up 15 minutes before class and just logging on and that's my day. But w because of that, students have also gotten lazy, mm -hmm. which is, I feel like, which is why and where these petitions are coming from. Mm. Most of the people who probably signed it are not international students, are people who probably live very close to either universities or have access to them at least, so. Agreed. Many universities have tens of thousands of students attending their institutions. Do you think that, given the pandemic, universities are ready to handle this many people attending in-person classes? Yes and no. Once again, normal means they've been doing it at some point, but because of COVID, they need to be very careful. It doesn't, it takes one person to cause an outbreak, you know what I mean? So they need to be very careful and people who are deciding to go back as students, as faculty, you guys need Everyone needs to be sure that they are following the rules and regulations, which I'm sure universities will be bringing out eventually, that they will be following. I'm sure they're going to be checking vaccines and all that kind of stuff. The university I'm, going, I'm currently attending, they already have a portal up and you have to submit your proof of vaccinations and all that kind of stuff. So. Wow, they're requiring proof of vaccination yeah. to go back? That's a whole other discussion too. That's a whole yeah. different discussion. Yeah. Do you think that widening options for dual delivery, that is in-person classes that are streamed online during their commission, may be a viable option? Uh, we just talked about this, right? Yeah. yeah, I think it would be good for students who cannot make it into the country within the next two months, or province for that matter, if we have students who are stationed in Vancouver or PEI for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it would be a good option, but it comes with its pros and cons, I guess. Yes. And do you have any more thoughts on to why you think that universities are insistent on switching their online courses back to in-person? Um, I guess one thing that we also mentioned as well was just the learning capabilities of it, right? Yes. You learn better 
a lot of people learn better when they are in person. Mm -hmm. It's just that environment of being in school. I, I've, I've been doing my course for almost over a year now, and I genuinely just don't feel like I'm doing anything. Yes. I'm just logging on to Zoom one fine morning. And I feel the same, and it's a, the same with many things in life. We found out through COVID, like going to the gym. Has yeah. A, it, it's, it's environment. We have environmental cues as, as human beings, yeah. and it's a group effort when there's other people around you learning. Yeah. You feel like you're focused in that group mentality. Absolutely. Yeah. And plus, you need someone beside you to cry with you during midterms and stuff. You, know? <laughs> yes, you need absolutely. someone to be like, oh, I haven't studied either, and feel good about yourself that, oh, yes. good, okay, I haven't either. <laughs> How often can you do that online? <laughs> not often. Maybe with your teddy bear or your cat. Maybe. Pet. Oh my, yeah, yeah. exactly. A pet for that. Yeah. <laughs> but they're not going to understand, so. Well, they probably won't pass either. They, yeah. I mean, you'll pass. You'll I pass will, but flying they, colors. Yeah, You're of doing course. Great. I hope so. <laughs> well, Simone, I'm wishing you all the best with your future endeavors. And Thank best you. of luck and great success with all of your uh, studies ahead of you. I know you have everything it takes. You're a really smart woman. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah. That's all for today. This is Ava Blackwell and you're watching the International News Channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date on all of our latest content.